In this video I'm going to show you yet another example of a Snapseed photo editing workflow and in this video I'm going to use most of the things we've talked about so far including straight and crop, tune image, black and white and so on. So let's get started. The first thing you might notice here is that the horizon isn't straight and if you want to change something about the horizon you know you should do it first. So let me open the straighten module and just rotate the image a tiny bit by like 1.6 degrees is enough I think and now once you're done with that just go ahead and apply changes okay and the next thing I want to do is change the composition a bit and so I'll open up the crop module one thing you might notice is that on the top left corner I still have a bit of uh, sun inside the frame which is kind of interesting because I like the sun rays but at the same time I don't really like the white blown out air area in the sky so I might want to cut that out so I could do something like this and also I think it, the photo is even more interesting if those sun rays are coming straight from the corner so let me just change the, change the picture a bit more but before I do that I'll go ahead to aspect ratio and pick the original aspect ratio so that I don't change that too much. Okay, so let me make the frame a bit smaller. And as I said, I want the sunrise to be coming from the corner. And I think this is it. Yep, I like this composition. So let me go ahead and apply changes. Okay, so now, now that I have the good composition, the next thing I'm going to do is go to Tune Image <clears throat> and increase Ambience. And I intend to make this photo black and white. So to do, But before I do that, I'm going to increase Ambience, and I'm going to increase it a lot. And notice how I, when I keep increasing Ambience, the sky goes really crazy. And if you just compare it to what it used to be, you know, the difference is huge. Like those clouds, they just look like they're come from a painting or something. And that's really why I'm doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and actually increase ambience all the way to 80. And I know it's a lot, and it would probably be too much if we were to keep this photo in color. But for a black and white uh, photo, 80 will be perfect, I think. So apply changes. And now I can go to the black and white module. Ta-da! And the image is black and white now. Uh, and notice how the sky looks really really cool and the reason it looks so good is that we increased ambience and tune image and if you do want to increase ambience make sure you do it before converting the image to black and white it just works better that way okay so now let's have a quick look at contrast and at, I think at higher contrast I can make the sky even more pronounced so something like 20 might work well here and now let's just have a look at brightness and I think for brightness I want to go down a little bit but I don't want to go down too much because then the entire image just becomes too dark so I think something like uh, minus 10 or even minus 5 I think will be good for this photo because I really don't want to make it too dark so now if we just compare uh, this to what we had before well you can see the difference here okay so let's go ahead and apply changes And now, once we have this image, we could just go ahead and save it, as I'm going to do right now. But if we want to, we could keep editing it. And I'm going to show you another really cool trick that Snapseed has. And that trick is the white balance in tune image. Now, we, you already saw how you could use white balance when we are working with that sunset photo. But you can also use white balance for black and white photos. And when you do that, what happens is that the photos are no longer black and white they become monochromatic. So one thing you could do is you could add an interesting sepia effect as I'm doing it now or you can just go through this entire range of values and you can choose between so many different options like a green photo might look really interesting or if you go scroll all the way back a blue photo you know you have quite a few options here and it's just really up to you to pick the, the one that fits the photo best and you know, I think a slight greenish tint might look really cool. Something like 89. Or perhaps, no, I like 89 the best, I think. 
So I'll keep it at 89, apply changes. And save the photo to camera roll, where right now I have two versions of this image. Now, this concludes this video series, the app of the week uh, of Snapseed. And you might be wondering why I didn't cover some of the other modules. Well, just to give you a quick overview, uh, there's the frames functionality, which honestly I'm not a big fan of because, you know, if, if you want to frame a photo, you, I think it's best if you print it out first and then just get a real frame. It's just my opinion, maybe. But you can certainly play around with frames and there are some interesting options there if, if frames are something you're looking for. And the cool thing about frames in Snapseed is that you can just, you know, select one that you like and then you can keep tapping that icon and it gets refreshed every time. So you get thousands and thousands of unique frame variations. So you can see here, every time you tap, the frame becomes somewhat different. So those are frames. Then you have a few more options. You have things like uh, drama, which just makes the photo more dramatic through applying filters. And you know, some of you might like this, but honestly, I'm not a huge fan of drama because that's, quite honestly, it's the easiest way to badly over-edit a photo. So if, you, so if you want that, go to drama. Otherwise, just be really careful. And if you do decide to use drama, just make sure you go to filter strength and decrease it quite a bit. You know, at low values, something like 50, drama is okay. And I think we could even go ahead and save this. But if you go, if you leave it at the default values of 90, well, drama is just too much. So we'll just save changes, just so that I have another copy of the shot. You can also do things like grunge, which is just essentially a bunch of effects and styles. And there are a few ways you could do this, but my favorite way is to, to just keep tapping the randomize icon and just seeing what comes out of it. And as you can see, sometimes interesting things can happen there. And you just keep tapping this until you find something that you like. You could also go through styles one by one. And there are hundreds of styles, as you can see. And then you can change things like brightness, contrast, texture, strength, saturation, and so on. Also something that's worth playing around with if you're into that kind of thing. But honestly, I just like to keep my photos clean. And that's why I don't use grunge too much. Okay, then there's also, uh, there's also vintage mode, which essentially is similar to grunge, but here you apply vintage filters, and they, ha they have a few styles to choose from. So if you're into vintage thing, this might be useful. You can also choose different textures, and every time you tap, the texture gets randomized. We can't really see it here, so we'll increase texture strength. All right, so now if you look at textures, you see that every time you tap on a texture, you get a different randomized texture. So that's just another thing you can play with if you like the vintage style photos. And finally, let's have a look at retro, retro looks, which is kind of like vintage, but here the adjustments are even stronger. Once again, here you can just do the randomized thing and you'll get things like light leaks over here or just some interesting effects in general. Again, it's a good option, but you know, I just like to keep my photos clean most of the time. So in general, I don't use this, but in this case, I'll just save this one because I kind of like it. Okay, so I'll save this version into camera roll as well, and that concludes this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching my Snapseed videos in my new App of the Week series. I hope you enjoyed these videos and I certainly enjoyed making them. Now if you like the videos and if you think that your friends or followers could benefit from them, please share them on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest or any other social media using the share buttons below. Also below this last video you'll find an opt-in form where you can leave your name and email if you want to be notified when I release the new videos next week. Now next week I'm going to cover VSCO Cam, which honestly is just amazing. Well, the name VSCO Cam might suggest that it's just another camera replacement app, but actually VSCO is so much more than that. It's an amazing editing app. It is indeed a camera replacement and it's a photo community. And honestly, the feature I like the most is editing. Like, it, it, even though it doesn't have as many different options as Snapseed does, some of the things you can do with VSCO are, are just amazing. I really love this app. I know you're going to love this app and I'm really excited to give you another tutorial next week. Now here's the deal, in order to get the tutorial next week, you have to leave your name and email in the opt-in form below. If you don't leave your name and email, you won't have access to the videos next week. 
So go ahead and enter your name and email right now and I'll see you next week.